Paul was a security guard at the Silent Center Museum in Oakheart. Though he had been working there for a while now, he'd never worked the night shift. Anthony was usually the guy who did, and he'd be taking a vacation soon. That would mean it would be up to Paul to take over that shift. Paul, oh, we need to talk. Anthony had said to him coming in for his shift that day. They had never spoken to one another before, so for Anthony to strike up a conversation now was a bit strange. Sure, man, what's up? Paul answered, figuring it had to do with their work protocol differences as he put his gear away. Anthony looked around, making sure they were alone, and then continued. The sculptures... The sculptures come alive at night. Anthony whispered. Paul was in disbelief and rolled his eyes, thinking it was a joke. <laughs> okay, Anthony, I'll make sure the sculptures stay in their spots, <laughs> he said, rolling his eyes. Paul, I'm not joking, Anthony pressed. His co-worker's plea went unheard as Paul was already walking away. Tomorrow will be his first day on night shift, after all. Upon entering the building the next evening to relieve the day shift. Paul got his gear ready and said goodbye to the morning shift as he began his rounds. As he walked the halls, he had to admit the place was eerie at night. Definitely lives up to his name. <laughs> he joked with a chuckle to ease his nerves. <laughs> a mocking chuckle sounded from behind him. He turned, shining his light in the direction of the sound, only to see nothing but an empty hall. Hello? He called out. When he didn't hear a response, he exhaled, calming himself, continuing his way. Everything's okay, Paul. Anthony's just trying to scare you with ghost stories. Just as he rounded the corner of the next room, he was face to face with a sculpture. The stone stood before him solemnly, its features worn by time. Spiderweb-like cracks spreading across its features underneath those was a red and pulsating mass. What in the world? Paul whispered as he backed away. How oh, did a heavy statue move by itself? Now that he got a better look at it, Paul was pretty sure they didn't have this sculpture in their collection. Raising his light to get a better look at its face, flecks of stone appeared decayed and peeling off, showing more of that red, unknown mass. Pitch black eyes stared at him. What are you? What are you? Paul raised his voice. It merely crinkled its eyes and slid forward into Paul. A loud, sickening crunch emanated from their sudden impact. As he tried crawling away, it stood upright on its own, <laughs> slamming down onto him with a distorted chuckle, mimicking him from earlier. Maybe he should have listened to what Anthony had to say about the sculptures coming to life at night. 
then he wouldn't be watching this thing, whatever it was, drag him towards the basement. A big drum sits in the middle of the room, full to the brim with what he assumed was plaster. Paul struggled against the sculpture's grip, but it only tightened its hold, lifting him up into the air by his arm. The sculpture slowly emerged him into the substance until all he could see was that crinkled-eyed expression on its face.